episode 101 presented by Vita Sport Shot. Today we have Canadian MMA icon and legend Mark Hamlin. Let's do it. Hello, folks. How are you? Welcome back. Episode 100, as again mentioned, sponsored by our friends at Beat It Sports Shot Canada. Check them out online at Beat It, B E E T I T Canada.ca. Uh, 400 milligrams of nitrates in every damn shot, helping you train better, the blood flowing great, and keeping you training longer. Now that I sold you on beet juice, let's get into our first uh, episode here, folks. Uh, it's been a first episode here in probably a week or so. Um, so really honored to have uh, this guy, first of all, on this podcast. Uh, Mark Hominick is a guy that not only, uh, you know, he's a talented, talented martial art artist, and he's done so much for Canadian MMA, but he's a guy that, uh, man, I followed from the beginning of when I started promoting. And uh, he's actually, I haven't spoke to him a lot in, in the last number of years, but uh, when I kind of started getting into this game, he's a guy that really kind of gave a lot of his time to not just me, but a good cause out here in the East Coast and came out here for a week. We'll talk about this a little bit, but I got to meet him and his wife, Ashley, and uh, it was just a wonderful weekend. And they're just really, really great people and ambassadors of the sport. And and uh, yeah, it was cool to meet him in that way. And uh, anyway, let's bring him on and uh, see what he's got to say and, and see how he's dealing with COVID and all that kind of fun stuff. So without further ado, Canadian legend, uh, UFC superstar, you know, icon of Canadian MMA and the owner of Adrenaline Training Center in London, Ontario, Mr. Mark Hominick. Hey, my man. Good to see you. How are you, buddy? How's things? Excellent. Oh, not too bad. You know, just here at the gym today and plugging away like every other one. Yeah, I see that. I see that at uh, Adre Adrenaline Training and Fitness, man. It's uh, like we were saying, you know, again, thank you for joining me, Mark. Oh, God. Uh, it's been Anytime. a while. And uh, you've, uh, like I said before, you've done a lot for me behind yeah. the scenes. And, uh, um, you know, for that, I am forever grateful. But oh, um, your gym, you know, with COVID, like everybody else, how's your, you're in Ontario. We're out yeah. here in the maritime bubble. How are you dealing with everything? Well, it was, it was a stressful time. I, you know, any, like any small business owner, I'm no, yeah. no, no more or less than anybody else running a small business, but definitely it was frustrating. Um, definitely for the first part, you know, just having the kids off and, yeah. you know, obviously closing the gym, we tried our best to at least give our members content every day. So we were running two classes a day, um, just online and giving it free access to anybody who want to come in. So it was a good introduction yeah. to anybody who maybe wouldn't been a part of our gym, but we wanted to give some support for the members that couldn't come into the, the facility. Mm -hmm. And again, for myself, if this is what I do for a living. So yeah. that, that was put on hold, life was put on hold. And, you know, I was wearing the teacher's hat at home doing the homeschooling. <laughs> so that, but, you know, like I said, we're going to look back at this and, and remember this for a lifetime. Yeah, well, that's it, man. It's it's crazy stuff to think about, like what we're going through. And I always think about it, Mark. Like people are like, oh, you know, it is crazy. But you also kind of think like how civilized our country has really acted through all of yeah. this. Like everybody's really kind of listening for the most part and doing our part. And that's why, you know, I'm pretty proud yeah. of Canadians. Yeah, you know, I I, I actually just thought the exact same thing. Is like a few times, like you know, you sit there frustrated because your business is closed and locked up, but that just proves that we are listening to the rules. We are, you know, supporting one another and in moving forward, like now, like for, for us here in London and the surrounding area, like masks are mandatory when you go to the store, like mm -hmm. and people are following the instructions, same at the gym, you know, we're limited to 50 people uh, per hour. Mm -hmm. Like, so, like I said, we're following the steps. And I think that's why, especially the, it can mean you look at the States and, and the problems we're having It's because yeah. they didn't follow the rules and, yeah. and it, it sucks that they're paying for it. And, you know, because it's not like we don't have friends down there and, and uh, oh, really? business business friends, training partners, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, their life is still on hold and still completely reckless. We're at least we're back. We're doing what we love to do, mm -hmm. getting somewhat back to normal. The kids are looking to get back to school in September. So those are all positive things. Couldn't agree more. You know, that that's very well said. Like how important is structure? You know what I mean? Not yeah. just for you, Mark, like you said, getting back to the gym, it's, it's your livelihood. It's not, not so much, you know, for me promoting is, is this thing on the side, you know, for you, the gym is a full time yeah. thing, you know, it's, it's your life and in, in blood, sweat and tears of your whole sure. life of training and everything. Right. So it's so important to get that structure back, but not only for the kids, just to go yep. to school too. Like, Oh, it's, it's crazy. Like, they don't, you know, think about that. They're not allowed to see their friends or, and again, I, I'm, you know, I'm making it sound like we have it so bad off. Like think about, yeah, other, but, think about other countries and, and, you know, yeah. it just poverty countries. It's like, you know, we, we have it pretty well in all rounds and all aspects of life. So, you know, this is just a little setback. 
Yeah. Well, that's it, man. And it's important to have, it's, it's funny though, like, because people like you, Mark, or, or my coach, Jared, who you met, like, or Jason, who you yep. also met, like having positive people around you, man, is, is, is the world of difference. And that it's hard for, because you as a coach, as an owner, people are looking up to you, not yeah. just online, but at your gym too. Though, oh, for you know? answers ever. And, and yeah. I just say like, if you're running anything, if you're running a coffee shop, you know, everyone who's, you know, underneath you are looking for answers. And if you don't have them, you have, it's hard to lead by example. Yeah, it really is. It's making it tough, but good for you, man. To like, I'm I'm really glad to hear that everything's kind of going somewhat back yeah, to normal. Yeah, exactly. You, guys, you know, you're the old cliche, but you're a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't like to use that cliche, but I will. <laughs> um, you know, I just had uh, old Jesse on the podcast a, oh, a week ago. Yeah. He was talking about he went to Abu Dhabi with uh, not Jesse Ronson, Jesse Kopp. Oh, Jesse Goff, yes, yes. Yeah. So it's good to have him back full time, you know. And what a, what a life experience, like, uh, to go, you know, go be part of that fight island. Like that's like as a fighter, like you're you're never gonna get that opportunity to do again. Yeah. So that was pretty cool, and you know, get to be a part of something that once in a lifetime type experience. And you know, we had two two fighters basically out of the out of the gym back to back weeks. So mm -hmm. uh, they they all got to to live that. I know Sam Stout went over with uh, Malcolm Gordon nice. the, the previous week, and then. Um, Jesse Goff with uh, Jesse Ronson and came back with a huge win, mm -hmm. huge confidence booster for for not not only Jesse Ronson but also Jesse Goff, you know, because he um you know he, he's he's building himself as our head coach for jujitsu and MMA here, awesome. and what what a confidence booster to go out there and you know get a big win, um you know in the UFC and it just kind of solidifies everything he he believes in and passes on to his students like Jesse. I love that, man. I, I think he, it's Mark, I got to say, like, because Jesse came out and competed in a yep. grappling tournament I had. And man, he is just a wonderful person to be around. And that's like, it. Like, such a positive influence. Man. Like, because he runs our uh, jujitsu program uh, as well as our kids' program. And, and uh, he's one of those guys that I don't even have to second guess yeah. his decisions, his, his leadership, and how he runs the class, how he re reflects all of us at the gym. I, I get 100% confidence on, on all aspects. Yeah. And that's why I put him in, in, in his role that he's at. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's, I guess, again, when you're running a business, like anything else, whether it's you're it's combat sports, but you're running a yeah. business at the end of yeah. the day. Right. So you for have sure. to people that you can rely well, on. That's just it. Like he, he's training Jesse, Jesse Ronson to get ready for a UFC fight, but he's also teaching a six year old to, you know, how to do, <laughs> yeah. do jujitsu class. So it's, yeah. it, you know, you, you have to wear a lot of hats in, in, in this, in this job. And, and he wears it uh, very well. Nice, good. How's the how's your numbers been? It's like so I know a lot of gyms are our numbers are kind of back up or or uh, like I mean we, I want to we were forty percent forty percent people canceled memberships, which we we right from the get go we gave everyone the opportunity because I don't know if if you lost your job if your wife yeah. lost your job like and again I didn't even want to ask a single question if mm. someone wanted to cancel their membership or put on hold there was no if ands or buts done. Right. So uh, we have a very loyal group um, because uh, like our, our gym is ever it's, again, say it's cliche, but I, I like to look at it as a family and mm. the family still supported us. So oh, like nice. we were, we're lucky we got through it uh, with, with the support of that, the family, but you know, like, like we still did lose, lose quite a bit of members, but mm -hmm. again, that, there's not, that, that's expected. I yeah. mean, any small business took a hit and, and, it, and it's the ones that are uh, willing to fight to, to get back on his feet or is going to survive. Yeah, very true. Very true. Well, that's, that's, that's the thing, you know, like, I guess, like you say, any business, they're going to, you're going to take a hit, but can you survive? You know, can you take that body shot? I guess. And that's it. Yeah. Just keep going. Right. Like, yeah, it's uh, I want to ask you, Mark, about, uh, I guess we'll get on to some not so gloomy shit about <laughs> business. Um, when, when we met like back in the day, uh, we were kind of, it was right around the time when like, Reebok, I think, was kind of taken yep. over, and we we had a conversation about how it how it kind of might work, like because we were talking about like when you know you know in the heyday when you'd get boxes of Zions and, and yeah. like just tons of sponsorship versus then, and how do you think it's way it worked out? Do you uh, think it's worked awful. out for the better? No, awful. I don't. I don't at yeah. all. I I think like if I look at my career, uh, even when I was fighting near the end, when I was you know fighting for a title or or on basically every, for the rest of after. The, my last five fights were all pay-per-view fights. Yeah. So I was uh, fighting on legit cards on main, 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 uh, main cards, the main yeah. portions of the pay-per-view. I made more two, three times the money in sponsorship than I did mm -hmm. in my fight. So again, that's how I, I made a living is, is off my sponsors. I mean, obviously the, the payday and the paycheck from the fight is, 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 uh, is great, but the sponsorship money was far greater. 
So I, I, that's the way I, I, I looked at, you know, making my career. And, and, and that's what kept me able to train in between two team fights, not have like, cause you see most guys, even guys in the UFC, you know, in between fights, they may have to take a little side job, yeah. you know? And, and if you're a professional athlete and you want to compete at the highest level, the focus every day when you wake up and, and when you go to bed should be competing. Yeah. And, and how am I going to be a better competitor? It's not how should I pay my bills. I mean, that's a question for everybody. But again, if you're if you're at the highest level of a of, of a sport, mm -hmm. you should be not worrying about um, you know making ends meet in between fights. You should be working about you know getting better, and that's it. That's the, the first and last focus of the day should be. Yeah, well said, man. And that that's coming from a guy who's been there, done that, folks. Um, because uh, it's interesting you say that because that was your stance back then and that's why i kind of yeah. wanted to say the whole thing like because you called it you're like it's yeah. not gonna work it's not gonna go as well as people well, like i said it, 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 it like i'm sure the ufc benefited like obviously because they yeah. um th because the money went to, to them and then it got dispersed how they seem fit and again there it's nothing wrong with th their decision they're running a business and, yeah. and again that's their business right because if you look at it, um i i looked at like as being an athlete especially in this sport, you're a sole proprietor, mm -hmm. right? Like, so you have the opportunity, you have a window of, I, I mean, you can't even say a year. So say you have five years at the highest level, mm -hmm. right? You have five years to, to make as much out of that career, both in, in a it, like successful being in the ring, but outside of the ring. So whether that's promoting yourself, whether mm -hmm. that's making sponsorship money, like, because you can't do this forever. And again, if you're competing at the highest level in the, in the highest level of sport, I mean, I think you should, that's something that could, you should be able to be, paid for yeah. it well I, it, I don't even know how it's crazy mark that it's even still a conversation yeah truthfully. it is, it is right. but like right. it's that's a reality of it like yeah. and, and and that's the the difference i guess in between mma and uh, say boxing where a lot of the boxers are able to promote their own fights so mm -hmm. they own the promotion as well as the, as the venue or sorry as as, as the the belt um but whereas the ufc they own they own the sport like people you know look at MMA as just UFC and, and mm -hmm. the UFC owns the brand. Yeah, so they yeah. disperse it their way. Like it's not Mark Hominick's fighting championship, but you know, it's a UFC mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the difference between boxing is it would be, you know, Mark Hominick or John Jones fighting champ if he was putting on his own yeah. uh, boxing belt. So that it's, it's just a sport we're in. And uh, you know, like each sport, you look at hockey in the sixties, you know, it was owned by the, the owners and now it's, it was it's owned more by the players. True. True. You think it'll get that way? Do you think like you see it progressing or it's, I, I don't know. It's just, it's such a unique sport and it's, uh, yeah. the UFC has done such a great job as being the leader in the industry and they, they are, there's, there's no yeah, other, there's no. there's no other, there's no, no, there's no other show you'd rather be in. Yeah. It's funny because like someone was asking about, you know, like this, this, uh, you know, when, when COVID first kind of came out yep. and UFC was, everyone's like, no, no, the UFC, like yeah. myself, I was kind of questioning, like, are they losing yeah. money? You no, know, and, and people are like, no. And then here they come and like, they're, they're the leaders. No, that like, and that's what they've done from or like ever since, I guess the Fatita days, uh, is they put the right people in line in whatever aspect of their other business, whether it's human resources, whether it's marketing, whether it's fine, like it doesn't matter. They have the best, nice. like they headhunt for every position in that company. Like, so they, they'll like, um, if they were, I remember when they were trying, I forget what they were trying to do, whether it was um, getting into a certain state, I forget which state it was. Mm -hmm. They hired the person who was like, really just understood the ins and outs of that state for the UFC. Like they had hunted that person yeah. and that was their own, own role. So anything they they've wanted to do, they've got the right person in charge to do it. And, and they know that it's going to be handled at the highest level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard, hard. To, it's funny, Mark, because like when we started doing like our promotion out here, like our actual and started planning our MMA promotion, people are like, Oh, you guys are doing great. You're going to compete with the UFC. I'm like, are you nuts? You yeah. Know, like, are you nuts? Like, we're in bumfuck nowhere in yeah. Nova Scotia. Trying, we're just doing lo like doing yeah. an event, trying to. But people don't understand like how how, I guess like, you can't be the UFC. Like, you yeah, no, like so they they branded themselves as as the industry, and then they've done the best job at it. But again, uh, there's nowhere else I'd want to fight. Yeah. Yeah, you you obviously like I, I spoke to you about that before too. Like you enjoyed your time there oh, a they, lot, and the memories made were crazy. Oh, I, I, and that's what I mean. Like I I love my time there, and I love the people involved. And yeah, that's that was the that's where I, exactly that's where you fight fight to be. And and I felt they were treated as you know well. Yeah. You know, obviously the paychecks. Yeah, everybody wants doesn't matter. You ask anybody, they everybody wants a bigger paycheck.
Totally, totally. Well, that's it. That's and that's the thing. Like whether you work an IT job or a farmer, yeah. like at the end of the day, the employer wants to get as much work out of you for the least that's amount it. of money, and that's you it. want to get the most money for the amount of work. It's, it's a base of business. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. I wanted to ask you quickly about uh, about uh, TKO. Um, you know, obviously TKO is not putting shows on right now. Uh, who knows what's going to happen there? Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of kind of interesting talk behind there all the time about Stefan and all that kind of stuff, yeah. but. Uh, this is a guy who really paved the way for Canadian yeah, so, MMA, man. Yeah, so I, I like his reputation. Obviously, everyone Everybody's has. Everybody's got one. Right? Yeah, you bet. And, and whether whatever happened behind closed doors happened behind sure. closed doors, but without TKO and UCC, it would be George St. Pierre, uh, David Wazo, Patrick Cote, Sam Stout, Mark Hominick, and the list goes on. Yeah. Uh, so, like, like he he pioneered our that show to be the number one. Uh, organization obviously in the country but if but not only that but if you are a champion there you were respected globally and, yep, and yeah so if you held that title it, it crossed borders it crossed promotions it, that was a respected organization it wasn't like you know you look at any other show and they may have one big fighter that comes out of that that organization and that's great but again it, it like through every single weight class five of us fought for a ufc title crazy man right it's pretty amazing to, yeah. like you look back and and that is was so special level. special to be and again but not only just with um you know getting us there but like um i remember the first, like everyone talks about like the ufc jet uh, jitters like yeah. your first fight in ufc you don't show up or the lights and the cameras uh shock you and you're not ready tko before i fought in the ufc i had already fought in front of ten thousand people on like mm. live pay-per-view had to do an interview uh, like on live tv did the pre-fight interview, did the photo shoots, did the, you know, so you do the big walkout to the ring. Like, so they, they, they not only uh, got you prepared in the ring, but also like the things that surround you. Cause all of a sudden I, I see it. I've seen it so many times when a fighter goes to the UFC and it's the first time they've ever had a microphone in front of their, their face with a camera on live TV. And, and, and you don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. So we, we were already prepared for that, that aspect of the sport as well. So it's, sometimes it's not just what happens when you're punching and kicking. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. There's there's a lot. There's so much more to promoting an event and, and what it that's entails, it. right? And no, uh, that's how you know. For me, as an MMA fan too in Canada, that's how I kind of yeah. grew up watching fights. Like that. Yeah. There's in Quebec. Like obviously Ontario's got a history of MMA too, but Quebec has such a story. Oh, it's great. That. That's it. Like and yeah, it was well, it, like the big like back in the day, it was before the TKO and UCC. It was they they had a huge boxing following, and like they still sell out uh, twenty thousand seat. Uh, arenas for boxing boats so it's still. It's, it's still a combat town combat uh, mm -hmm. pr province so uh, like it took a bit for them to get uh, into the MMA like whether it was the commission or, or the sanctioning bodies or just the fans itself mm -hmm. and but having a guy like George St. Pierre at the top of the the, the, the mountain in 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 any sport he's going to he's going to skyrocket just because of his personality his persona and and he helped all of us yeah i remember you saying that before like he 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 helped everybody in the sport like just yep. by and and uh, yeah it's interesting too mark because you guys are kind of like the the consummate professionals uh like do you think it's changed a little bit in that regard yeah, well, like, like the like the, you look there's always new eras like uh, you know the tito era yeah, the, true. you know like everyone and and, and the thing is if, if your star is is that person the company is going to follow that. So if you look at like the, I like, like the Conor McGregor era. Yeah. So now it's all about how much trash you can talk, how much, how, mm. how much things you can say online or how much attention you can draw by whatever you do. Again, that's just the era they're in, you know? And then there was the Ronda Rousey era. Like, you know, so like you, you look at um, whoever their star was at the time and their whole promotion is going to be based around what makes them popular and everyone tries to emulate what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's very and if, interesting. And for for George, like you look a guy who's wearing a uh, suit and tie at a press conference, and you're coming up in a promotion, mm -hmm. you're seeing that's what the champion does. That's what I'm going to do. Exactly. That's the thing. Like that's yeah. You know, so like, yeah, so you, you lead by example, and if that was the the leader in your promotion or uh, the guy that you aspire to be, you're going to act like him. 
Yeah. Yeah. Very true. You know, it's like people, people at the end of the day have a huge amount of people that follow them. Right. Yep. And, oh, you bet. And like shit ton of people looking up to you. Right. And uh, you can use it for good or bad, I guess. And That's some it. people like you use it for entertainment and, but you got to think sometimes Mark, that some people are going to be like 30, 40 years down the line, but some people, you know, might not care. Like Kobe might not give a shit. Yeah. Who knows? Right. Yeah, you bet. Like so. it's interesting. What, uh, are you still into the Jeeps? Yo. Oh yeah, I got I got a, a '99 Jeep with so 30, 35 inch tires. I sold the roof and doors, so that's it's nice. only it's not only allowed <laughs> on a sunny day. Yeah. Do you get out like into the? I, I, yeah, I, I do. Like I I go fishing quite a bit, and my my a couple of my friends have like two hundred acre farms, so we go you know on a weekend and nice. put around that. And I got two little girls, so they like to, yeah. to go for rides in the Jeep, and it's a lot of fun. Like yeah. it's yeah, not the most yeah. efficient vehicle, but. You'll have to start a, like a Chad Mendez down there, your buddy. You'll have to start a little yeah. in the hunting channel. Yeah, I don't know about that. But no, it's, yeah, <laughs> like I, I definitely love to get out. Like that's if, if I have any free time, it's it's spent in the Jeep going fishing or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's important, you know, to get away from this. Oh, you bet. Times, right? How did you, how did you separate that? Like during your whole career, how did you split? I, 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 the thing is, I don't want to, like, this is my passion. This is my life. Like, I love it. I, I still love it. I, I still train twice a day. I, I'm around it from all yeah. like outside of having a family and different goals and that's that aspect my day-to-day -day lo love of of the the sport is still there no, and, awesome. and it'll never change like that's like i love being at the gym i love my job i love training people i love being a part of being on the mats and i don't believe that's ever going to change no well I, I don't think like especially someone who's competing I, you know i guess there uh, maybe maybe some people mark that no I, uh, like some people like when you're done competing you're done competing but that that's and that's fine like the thing is i i i i just love the sport i love every aspect about it i love being on the mats i love you know being at the gym and i love that environment you've been watching the fights lately i, I do like it's it's a little tougher just with the, with the mm -hmm. family and, and and whatnot but like i i always follow the sports sometimes it's it's a little hard because it, it is every weekend and like there's new stars that come out yeah. all the time um and you, you may miss me some of them like all of a sudden um like a kid will come up and he's fighting on a semi main event and he's got a lot of hype and i i missed his last three fights so i don't know who he is right so yeah. it's like so that that's sometimes hard to follow but uh, i definitely uh i'm always have my eyes on the sport yeah that's well that's good to hear man it's funny you say that too because there's it's it's interesting like how how back in the day, like you'd almost have to win like three or four fights in a row yeah. after being like maybe a, a loss and coming out like six and two or whatever to get a title fight. And now people yeah. are, are co-main event. Now you're going to be three and oh. Yeah. You know, but now, it's weird. Some of the signings they make, but I mean, it's uh, yeah, business. Like you said, that's it. like they, 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 they go to different markets and, and obviously, especially if you look at uh, like, we just had a kid, um, he, like I guess we're associated the, at the gym. Like he tra he's trained here a few times. And we have TJ, good TJ yeah. right? A uh, TJ Laramie. Um, like with that that show that he he um, got the contract on in that uh, Dana White contender series. The whole premise is go out there and finish your fighter. So they don't really care what you've done before. Like that night, you go out and p perform, right? And that's the the kind of guys they want. Mm -hmm. but, and that's good. Like it doesn't doesn't like sometimes you're not going to be twenty and zero. Like all of a sudden you have five fights. And yeah. you, you show that kind of potential, you're going to get an opportunity, mm -hmm. right? And, and Which I, is good. I, I kind of, yeah, exactly. I like that because if you look at boxing, you're not even going to get on an undercard until you're 30 and 0. Wow. Like, like you know, I'm just being generous. Yeah, I know. Like, saying, yeah. You know, like on a big, like a Mayweather type promotion or, or like something like that, you're not even going to get your eyes on until you're like 30 and 0. Mm -hmm. And, but, but you fight 30 cans very safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, but you, very safely because you don't want to have that blemish on your record where MMA, you, you see guys fighting in t t title fights that have like look at Mazadol. Yeah. He's, he's got losses in the do double digits, and he's headlining the show mm -hmm. for a pay per view and fighting for a title. But he has twelve losses or thirteen losses. How does that happen? It's because mm -hmm. of the type of well, the type of sport we're in. There's a lot more ways to lose in boxing, but also like the type of fighter he is. He goes kill or be killed, and mm -hmm. that's the kind of guy I want to watch. Yeah, super exciting. Right. Totally. So yeah. that and that's that's what the the difference between the sports. Mm -hmm. interesting you say that too and it's it's i don't know to me like uh the sport to, there, there's not much more exciting sport in the world you can put i don't know if people are noticing right now because other sports are just starting yeah. to run but like you deal with nhl guys all the time you train and have buddies that are playing at the high level there's not much more exciting than a high level fight man oh, it's great. Crowd, That's crowd or not 
That's yeah, exactly right. And, and the UFC, I think, um, obviously them taking the risk to put on the shows during COVID it paid off because there was a lot of eyes, um, that were on that, on, on, on the card or on the cards that normally wouldn't be because there's no other sports going on at that moment. Like mm -hmm. if the all did over a, a 1.2 1 million buys or something wow. like that, like that's kind of Mayweather yeah. and, and, uh, like Conor McGregor type sales. So obviously people were dying to see sports, but also, you know, they did a good job promoting it and mm -hmm. got a lot of new eyes on, on the sport because yeah. of it. And hopefully, Which is huge. And hopefully the fans stay and, you know, can continue to get introduced or reintroduced to the sport. Yeah, very well said. Well, Mark, I don't want to, I know you're at the gym, you're, you're a busy <laughs> man. I don't want to take up much of okay. your time here. Uh, you know, for anybody, again, Mark came out here, he came out to the East Coast. I don't know what year that was, Mark, 2014, maybe, 13? Yeah. I would say 14 around there. So yeah. it was a charity golf tournament for yes. Prince County Roots for Youth. And we, we raised like $10,000 or something like that. But Mark, uh, he, he was generous enough. So folks, he came out here, not only he donated his time, uh, him, him and his great wife, Ashley came out. He donated his gloves, uh, for the Jose Aldo fight. Um, you came and golfed, you did a yeah. seminar, uh, for free and donated all the money back to the charity. You were, man, you were kind uh, of one of those guys, Mark, that like, you were just so good to deal with. And no, I appreciate uh, that. I can't. No, like, yeah, we, we, we still talk about that trip. Yeah, well, it was the first time, like, I, just, I can't believe I ha haven't been out to the East Coast of all the times I've traveled in, in, yeah. in the country and been on fight cars. I've never been to the East Coast. So it was kind of a bucket list thing for me, too. And it lived up to the hype. Like, uh, nice. Ash and I still talk about it. So you haven't, did, did, I know you're going to possibly get out there with Todd to PEI. Did you ever end up getting out there? No, no. We didn't get a chance, no. right? Yeah, it's just, you know, life, life happens. Yeah. But no, I like that's, that's, I'm going to be back out there at some point. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, a great time. And, and uh, the people was, I would say the, the, the fondest memory. No, yeah, you were, uh, it was an honor to have you out there, dude. Nice. And uh, I really appreciate what you've done for me and, and yeah. the East Coast community here. So uh, thanks very much. I wish uh, everybody in your family lots of love and uh, yeah. have well, a great please. night at the gym. And thanks so much for joining us, man. Anytime, man. It's good to talk to you. Good to see you again. Okay. All right. There you have it, folks. Mr. Mark Holland, Canadian legend. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Fantastic, folks. Uh, super honored to have Mark. Uh, it's been a while since I've chatted with him. Probably, like I said, it was probably 2014. He came out here and, and I've spoke with him a little bit through the years, but a guy who I've, uh, I've looked up to tremendously is a great dad, a great father, a great uh, husband. You know, he's just a, a great coach, a great mentor. So check him out online or if you're ever in the London area, make sure you look him up. That's a legend of Canadian MMA folks. So uh, yeah, fantastic to have him on. That's part one, uh, episode 101 tonight, folks. Again, thank you to our friends at Beat It Sports Shot. Uh, they are sponsoring this show. Check them out at beatitcanada.ca, B-E-E-T-I-T, canada.ca, and uh, tell them we sent you. We'll be back in an hour or so. We have uh, the legendary grappler, Braulio Estima. We'll see you then, folks. Lots of love. If you can be anything in this world, be kind. Thanks for tuning in, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks to our friends and sponsors. Without you, none of this is possible. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not.